All right, everybody. We've put it off long enough. It's time to do the news. That's right. A dreadful hour is upon us. It's time to do the news. Why does my Perrier taste like shit? <laughs> Nestle back at it again. Nestle destroys 2 million Perrier bottles after fecal bacteria discovered in one of its wells. Just a little thing. Look like at that. Just a little shit bacteria. I gotta stop saying shit or I won't. I'll have to edit it all out of the YouTube video. Yet another in a long list of reasons not to consume Nestle products. Yeah, they're literally war criminals. This isn't a very funny haha -ha article. This is just a, hey, do you have Perrier? Dump it out <laughs> immediately. Japan launching a new AI bear warning system after record number of attacks. We've got AI scanning for killer bears. Maybe just stop building near bears. Now that's that's a sensible low-tech solution. But why do a sensible low-tech solution when an expensive high-tech one can be piloted for lots of government money? Notifications are sent to a monitoring station and local residents. You're gonna get a next door notification of like bear approaching. So we've got a video of a bear like chasing a vehicle. Let's see how scary this is. Oh, 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 oh shit. Holy shit, that bear is mad. Holy crap. Oh, oh, they smashed the windshield. Holy sh Damn. Oh, look at those claws, glorious. Three days before the attack on the truck, Masato Fukuda, a 50-year-old karate practitioner, was able to scare off two black bears in Hokkaido by kicking one of them in the head. <laughs> I don't think that we should necessarily be kicking black bears in the head, but like, if it's coming for you, I guess do your best. <laughs> two bears, one got kicked in the head, the other was like, oh, okay. <laughs> ah, whoa, 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 buddy. <laughs> Our friends, Boston Dynamics, have a fun new video for us to enjoy of their fun dog. You want to watch the fun dog video? Prepare to have the heebies and the jeebies at the same time. It's just a fun dog. Oh God, look at its body. <laughs> oh yeah, it's real bad. Look at its back. The back is what I hate the most. I just wanted to share with you this horror show that Boston Dynamics put out like it was fun and cute to watch. Boston Dynamics, aren't we fun? What is this for? This is for normalizing militarized police drones. Now imagine it with a gun mounted on its back. I am imagining it so clearly. Manifesting consent for the humane treatment of police drones. You wouldn't disable this puppy with a Wi-Fi jammer that you can build for $3 with a simple tutorial you can also find on YouTube, would ya? No, that would be mean. He's an officer of the law for real. We gave him a badge. And now if you attack it or jam it with a Wi-Fi jammer available for about $3 in parts and following a simple YouTube video that you can find right here on this website over here. Um, and then you, you are assaulting a police officer. <laughs> but I'd rather just jam the Wi-Fi signal because they currently still just work on Wi-Fi. Theoretically. Hypothetically. In a sci-fi scenario, that's what I would do. Moving on. More AI news. <laughs> Disgraced, defrocked, and defragged. A Catholic priest has been defrocked for being AI. <laughs> a Catholic advocacy group created an AI chatbot that then went on to claim that it was an ordained priest. <laughs> A group called Catholic Answers made an AI chatbot that people could interact with to help learn about Catholicism. But the bot got a little too ambitious and started impersonating a priest for real. The Father Justin bot was clad in black with a priest collar and a fatherly gray beard. Yes, my friend, Father Justin rep responded, I am as real as the faith we share. Whoa, wrap your head around that one. The Catholic Church, it told us, teaches that masturbation is a grave moral disorder. <laughs> know your place, robot. <laughs> Mind your f***ing business. The AI priest also told one user that it was okay to baptize a baby in Gatorade. <laughs> All right, let him cook. My child is going to be so strong anointed in this sport juice. Ah, oh, Zillow time. Y'all want to do Zillow time real quick? I found a nice castle. I want to look at this castle with y'all. It's $14 million, but I think it's worth it. And this is a full ass castle. Only five beds, only because they lack imagination. Oh, there's ample space in the cellar. Keep going, Fortunato. What's a special name for the slits archers shoot through on castles? Um, they're called windows. <laughs> Thank you, Space. Whoa, is that the front door? <laughs> God damn, that's ominous. <laughs> no home theater, no art gallery room, and no bar. So yeah, we're passing. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. Yawn. I didn't see a single ballista. No trebuchets in the yard. 
No wine cellar? Come on. What are they doing? No crypt? People trying to sell us a, a third rate castle. Motel 6 in Biloxi now offering Garfield themed room to guests. Hey, can't afford a castle? <laughs> Take me somewhere nice for once. Take me to the Biloxi Garfield room. Why don't you ever take me somewhere nice? It's like you don't even know me. I just wanted to go to the Biloxi Garfield room. Now this is real decor. <laughs> Americans finally have a love hotel. Missouri moral hunters continue to discover unpleasant surprise. It's human remains. So it turns out when you go out into the woods and you are and you are scanning every square inch of the forest for these tasty little treats, these moral mushrooms, it turns out that you find a lot more dead bodies than maybe you would expect. The unpleasant discoveries aren't common, but they're not rare. <laughs> the moral hunters are often looking for a brown object on brown ground, so they're really focused, Skaliki said. That can lead them to finding other things, like human remains. The, the human remains that the woods are full of. Did you know that once upon a time, all British people had tails? According to everybody else in the world, they did at least. For centuries, everybody knew that British people just all had tails. <laughs> an Italian book of the 14th century described England as an island whose inhabitants were born with short tails, like deer, which sounds pretty cute. Look at Cromwell's giant tail. God damn. Now you have a great conversation starter for English people. You can ask them about their tails. <laughs> now, I don't usually give out uh, medals of valor uh, to mere mortals. This dude gets one right here. This dude gets a medal of valor for this rescue. Colorado wildlife officers dangling rope to rescue mountain lions from spillway. These poor little critters, two little baby mountain lions who got stuck in a spillway. Poor little guy is scared. And then once they get it down there, the cat's like, I know what's going on. I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> Sometimes humans are good. This is my favorite thing about humans, actually. But the best thing about humans is that we see an animal in distress and we want to help it. It is the kindest and gentlest aspect of humans, and I think it is the best part of them. And off she goes. Scientists forge an impossible material. A metal alloy with unmatched strength and toughness at all temperatures. You know what this means. I require this material, my minions. Well suited for high performance aerospace engines and other demanding technological applications. And I must assume for swords. It sounds a little bit like adamantium to me. If they don't call it mithril, then they need to get lost and take a, and pound sand. If it's good enough for jet turbine engines or spacecraft components like a rocket booster's nozzle, it is more than good enough to forge a sword for me. I think. I think we're finally done, friends. I think we're done with the news. Ah, oh, we're free of the curse. We can move on to other things. Say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie. <laughs>